Welcome everybody. My name's Scott Hebbard from Spark Systems and welcome to the Sparks Global Enterprise Architect 15 webinar series where we continue talking about Enterprise Architect for business analysis. I'm very pleased that so many of you could join us today and it's great to have everyone here and uh, I'm really looking forward to talking about Enterprise Architect because Enterprise Architect is a, an amazing tool for managing requirements and uh, can really help any business analyst do their job on a day-to-day -day basis and become more productive, more effective, and do things much more efficiently and quickly. So diving right in. Today, we're gonna to be looking at uh, Enterprise Architect for Business Analysis, and we're gonna be looking at requirements management. Today, the presentation will be conducted by Nithya. So Nithya is an experienced IT consultant uh, that specialised in solutions for uh, business analysis, business data, business intelligence, information architecture. So she has a great deal of experience in all phases of IT projects and uh, has a great deal of experience with Spark Systems Enterprise Architect. She's a certified business analysis practitioner and a competent business strategist with expertise in aligning business goals to technology solutions to drive process improvement and innovation. So I'm very pleased to have Nithya here with us today and I really look forward to um, being able to hear more from her in the presentation today. So the agenda, first of all, I'm going to talk about how to submit questions. Then we're going to discuss business analysis requirements management. We're going to examine a requirements model in Enterprise Arctic. So we're going to bring up Enterprise Arctic and show how some of these things can be done. And at the end of the session, we're going to open up with a Q&A session. Where we'll be able to hear from you and answer some of your questions in relation to requirements management in Enterprise Arctic. So how to ask questions, please note that audio is muted for all participants. Uh, you will be able to type questions to the host. And if we can't answer all questions live, we'll follow up offline. On the right of screen, you'll see the uh, GoToWebinar uh, session box uh, under the questions tab. Simply enter the text, uh, hit send or hit enter on the numeric keypad. And that'll come through to me, the host and uh, we'll be able to answer those questions at the end of the session. And feel free to uh, add questions throughout the duration of the session. But right now, I'd like to hand over to Nithya, who's going to uh, present today. And uh, I'd like to uh, welcome Nithya and uh, hand over control to her. And Nithya is going to be presenting on Enterprise Architect for Business Analysis and she's going to be looking at requirements management. And I can see on screen that it says takeaways and there's some uh, takeaways there about defining requirement structure. So I can see your screen, Nithya. So uh, Thank welcome, you, how are you today? I'm feeling great, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'll let you get to it. Welcome everyone, um, thanks for your time. Let's uh, dive into the details from the beginning. Um, here are the takeaways for today's webinar. What we're going to discuss about is how to build and manage requirements repository in Spark Systems Enterprise Architect. As we all know, requirements, managing a requirements repository is a um, huge task. It's, it, it's got various activities, varied activities. Often those activities are iteratively managed. And uh, it starts from elicitation and documentation. You refine the requirements, manage change, and you know, how to review, how to communicate, how, et cetera. So what we're going to look at today are these key important things. One is defining a structure of a requirement. Next, implementing a traceability, how to establish relationship between the requirements and the solution components, um, and also between the, relation, uh, the requirements themselves, and how to implement traceability from the beginning when a requirement is defined and approved, and then through, through to, to the solution components, to the implementation components, to the end. So we are talking about end-to-end -end traceability here. And uh, 
we need to have some support for requirements prioritization in the tool as well as we all know we are all uh, living in a remote work environment situation where it we, we all the team cannot be standing in front of you know a kanban board or in an agile board in an agile stand up room and discuss so um, AI has beautiful features to support remote collaboration for agile standups. Um, finally, I would also like to uh, um, add some um, information about how to import requirements from a text document or a spreadsheet document which you already hold for example there may be an organization which is managing all the requirements in a huge spreadsheet or in word documents and how how do you import it into ea to make a proper repository in order to you know trace the requirement to the solution components this is what we are going to focus today um, all right let's dive into enterprise architect scott please let me know if you are able to see enterprise architect i'll let you know when it's uh, coming up um can't see it just yet so just while that's coming up, there's a few people saying, you know, will this be recorded and will it be available? I can see Enterprise Architect now, Nithya. Um, and so, yes, it will be available on the Spark Systems YouTube site and it will also be made available on sparksystems.com slash webinars, probably in about 48 to 72 hours. So uh, look Fair. forward to seeing Fair. that. And Mark had a question saying, what version of EA are you using? So uh, this week, Enterprise Architect 15.2 has been released, so it's uh, wonderful that we can uh, be showcasing that. So I'll hand over to you, yeah. Nithya. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Here we are. So this is, uh, these are all the topics we are going to discuss. I've used the mind map diagram of EA. As you can see um, the type of diagram here. So let's start with the requirement structure. So why is a requirement structure very important? Is because it's not just a statement, a user statement or a business need, which we are defining with the basic, the smart rules of a requirement. We need to have more attributes, ideally in real life, okay? So in order, we, we can add more smarts to a requirement if we have the ability to capture you know say a security status has been quality checked um you know what so it, it helps you in cost control to get more accurate uh technical specification or if, if it is a technical requirement you get more accurate transition of this requirement into actual solution. So these kind of attributes are very important. Let's see what I'm talking about in a minute. Um, okay, I just like to show you this thing, you know, this uh, little infinity symbol means there is a child diagram to this element here. And this small eye like icon, if you click that, that is an interesting feature I just wanted to you know, add this on to this uh, presentation. So you click on that, you will be able to see what is inside this uh, in the child diagram without having to drill down if you want to stick in this particular diagram. For now, I'll just drill down, double click on requirement structure, and then yeah, here you go. So I've created a checklist of items that we are going to discuss today. The first one is requirements, creating requirements from patterns in a toolbox. So here's the diagram which I've created and kept it ready. Uh, we'll open the toolbox. I'm pinning the toolbox now. And you can see the requirements toolbox. So as this is the requirements diagram, the requirements toolbox has popped up. And uh, there is a section called patterns. If in EA, most of the toolboxes will have patterns, that is to help you assist in building or getting started with, that, with the modeling of that particular diagram. For, he, for, for our case, it is requirements diagram. I'm going to drag and drop functional requirements pattern. So this is the pattern that's going to be created. I say, okay, add pattern, yes. And here you go. See, it's as simple as this to create requirements from patterns. Then users can double click on it. 
and then you know the properties dialog box will open up and you can type in whatever details you want to add okay these are the functional requirements and you can see the checklist is also attached if you want to drag and drop a checklist another checklist that's, that's the one here this checklist is um it adheres to the bebox standard so it's you can say if a requirement is atomic attainable cohesive etc because often what happens in a rush or if we are, we are dealing with huge number of requirements in a day we forget about like also, uh, you know, if we, if the requirement defines, satisfies all of these um, attributes, okay, um, aspects, I should say. So this is one. Let's just create another pattern, which is for non-functional requirements, and see what we get. There you go. Yes. So these are the set of non-functional requirements. Right, so architectural implementation, regulatory requirement, and security requirement. So, as you can see in this diagram, and then I will also say the extended requirements in the toolbox here, you can see these type of requirements. So, it's not just one requirement element, there are different types of requirements according to what you're uh, defining, whether it's a business requirements document you want to model, or if it's a functional document or NFRs, you can clearly you make use of uh, this extended requirements um, toolbox. Um, all right, let's go back to our parent diagram. So we have uh, ticked this off, we have looked at this, then we have create requirements from the toolbox. Yes, let's say, for example, I will get a non-functional requirement onto the toolbox. And here it is. And double click on this. So we get the usual tags and then the requirements tag. This is what we are going to discuss uh, as the second topic, you see, uh, system defined requirement attributes. So EA requirement is something system defined. You will get it out of the box when you purchase EA. Um, so for NFR, the requirements um, for a non-functional requirement will be the attributes, I mean, for the non-functional requirements are availability, configurability, all these, you know, all these aspects are covered. So when you define an NFR, these set of attributes will make sure your NFR is precise. So this is what I mean by attributes for requirements. It is not just enough to adhere to the smart rule of a requirement. We need to capture more information. So what in this particular for, for a particular requirement, how do we ensure availability? What are the things that we need to make sure availability is achieved? They, for example, say like you need to have 99.9% .9 availability. How do you make sure? So all these kind of information we can capture in these attributes. These are user-defined attributes. Okay. Um, let me check this off. And then user-defined requirement attributes. These are new tag types. For example, let's say I have this requirement here. Mm, I'll double click on this. Okay, I need to say, um, okay, sales, I need daily sales report, must be generated at the end of end of um end of business or in australia we call it close of business every day and emailed to the uh, sales and finance team let's say this is one requirement okay um i need to add more information for this how do i ensure uh, to capture other details let me go to tags. I can add new tag values, okay? You can on the fly create some tag values, say, okay, I need to see, I need to add some comments here. 
a fellow BA is reviewing, I need to add some comments. So I can just say comments, but this is, there is no type definition to this. It's just a text, it's just a string text box, and you can't even have a memo box here to type in more details, okay? So this is one way. I don't want this. I want it to be more specific. So what I, I will do is I've created some extra tag values for me to capture the details. For example, here, say BA details, I'll add this, which is a memo box. So I can type in multiple line text here. Uh, and here, let me say, okay, department in charge. The default value is set to sales, okay, because it's a sales report. It, now, as you can see, this is a drop down box. So it can, can be IT. No, it's a sales report. So the report is generally generational reports are handled by IT team. So I'll just put IT. Um, okay, that's uh, a drop down box. Um, I, if I want more, there are, for example, say quality assurance checked or not. Okay, this is just a Boolean value, whether it's true or false. This is another type. There's so many different types of tag values you can create in EA. So what I have done is I've just given you examples of few types, like for example, security status. This could even be a color. If it is red, no, the security status is red. You have to, there is, there, it, it could mean, you can define this. It could mean there's some security risk or it could mean no, it's not being checked yet. So, how did I actually achieve it? Let's see. How did I create this user defined tag types is? Um, okay, now I will go into configure and then UML types. Okay, remember this configure and UML types. If I, when I click on this, you'll get this UML types dialog box. Hope you all can see it. Um, and I click on tag value types. See, this is how I defined the BA details. In the details, you just say type is memo. This is a tag name and the description, you hit save button. And then department in charge, this is another tag value, which I made it as a checklist. So type equal to checklist. Values are, you know, these, these are the values for my checklist. And then save, etc. And quality check, which is a Boolean type. And it can even be a URL if you want. Okay, this is supposed to be in a particular repository or it can be published somewhere, like link to a SharePoint, it, it may be anything. So if you want to have a URL, you can make the type as a URL. And uh, this is enum, which is basically the drop down box, what type of report you want. Um, security status can be a color. So I hope this is quite a useful feature. So having said that, this is, you're creating uh, these tagged value types on the fly, and this tagged value types can be, cho can be cho chosen for any kind of EA element, okay? This is just a tagged value type, you've added it, and you'll get it, this is one way. There's another important, uh, a special way, I will just mention it uh, separately here, but I can't go into details for this webinar because it takes more time. You can easily get the information from, uh, you know, the website. Uh, there are a lot of resources, videos, etc. So uh, creating user-defined profiles, by doing this, what you can do is you can create tagged values to specific elements. Say, for example, I want these tagged values applied only to the requirements. You can do that using profiles. Um, or you can create a specialized, a customized toolbox for your own organization. Say, for example, in an insurance industry, if there is a, you know, um, a health um, insurance organization, there can be requirements, health insurance requirements, or it can be, you know, it, it's you know, it's to, there are different customer segments. If you want to have toolbox for each and every customer segment, that can also be possible. I'm just 
giving you some you know random examples of why you need a customized toolbox depending on the on your organization depending whether you want to have a customized toolbox and a customized diagram and customized set of attributes to your requirements that can also be done it's highly effective to have a customized you know toolboxes and profiles that are specific to your organizations i know many of our customers are using customized profiles and mdg technologies that suits the specific needs of the organization um okay let's say okay stay, set status color this is something which i've found useful for my own work um i stood down into this in the example i'll just say the diagram okay here it is you can see here okay some of the requirements have you know the green highlights and some has um, one has blue and one has yellow what does it mean here's the legend the greens can be the requirements that are validated and uh, yellow are the ones that are proposed they are it to be reviewed and uh, there are blue ones which are you know actually been approved it's been reviewed and approved and the ba can okay fine i'll do the specification on this uh, so uh, solution specification document and then give it to the developer and we have implemented um as you can see there are no implemented requirements here we, for this example we have not reached that stage let's say that uh, agree. So how do we set the status for the requirements? You can go to layout, all right? And then there's this appearance, click on appearance. And then you have to select the stick box, uh, sorry, this menu here show status colors. If I unclick it, you can see, you know, um, unselect it, you can see the colors have disappeared. Let's now I'm going to uh, click on this show status colors. You can see the colors have appeared. So how do you define colors? Let's go into the same place again, layout appearance, and then configure status colors. And then a dialog box shows up for status and then the status colors are this. For example, if I want to create a new one, say status is verified, but not validated, that means it's not tested. Okay, verified by stakeholder. I just mentioned this. And then I want a color to be, you know, we don't have, uh, we have yellow, we don't have orange. Let's say I'll select orange and then save. Okay, close, got that, right? For example, let's say the new user, this has been verified. I double click on this. So how do we actually set the status of requirements? Mm -hmm. um, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Um, okay, here we go. That's in progress. I want it to be verified. Apply. Okay, see, we get orange status color. So that's how you make use of color coding in order to see or highlight the status of the requirements. If you're presenting, this would be a very good uh, way to present the requirements to your stakeholders or your managers. Um, let's go back to our panel diagram. So we have looked at all these topics for the requirements structure. So, what do we understand from this is okay we need more attributes which can help us make more accurate solutions it can improve the quality of requirements um, it can even decrease the time taken for the you know for actual implementation so that they don't have to come back and get information because you can attach urls or more supporting information etc when a requirement is defined um, it, you also decrease a risk because you have all these you know security status quality control whatever you want to add there as an attribute to ensure that you are decreasing risk you can have this flexibility of adding attributes and make sure uh, fully defined requirements is captured and logged. Mm. This will also help you in uh, scope management, etc. Let's go back. Now we have uh, seen the uh, structure. Let's go into relationship between the requirements. Okay. Here we are. 
relationships in toolbox is the first topic we're going to see so in this toolbox uh, so these, these are the basic elements and then we have these requirements here and then requirements relationship we looked at the patterns and let's see other relationships so a relationship element can have the aggregate relationship or it can have an inheritance relationship dependency or information flow and trace so um how do you model relationship in diagram let's say i have a, a you know a functional uh requirement and then a business requirement this could be this functional requirement um okay uh, so it can depend or realize a particular business requirement okay this could be one type of re relationship or uh, if there's a user requirement okay and then we have a functional requirement say for example the user requirement says um i'm colorblind i don't want too many colors uh, or i don't want these kind of colors etc you're going to uh, just implement a system for a specific set of uh, people who are colorblind then there can be a user requirement which suggests that and then the functional requirement is that then you can say okay i'm i realize that this user requirement is you know um satisfied by this particular functional requirement or this could even be a real, realized relationship so de depending on the you know on the use case on how you want on the scenario uh, you can use the relationship this is modeling in a diagram okay let's go into um, so the toolbox so the relationship in diagrams and let's see uh, creating relationship between requirements okay uh, just um, nested hierarchical relationship what i'm going to do is um okay we are in this part i'm going to the project browser we are here i'll just um add a new package and it's um nested nested requirements and create a diagram so yes um, we are here i just in my last webinar people asked like how do i actually go to a specific toolbox so for example i typed in uh, the requirements was already selected okay i'll just you know just wanted to show you that i'll do it again mm, add a diagram so i need these are all perspectives so i just want to have requirements um we are, we are already in requirements diagram that's why it's not coming uh but let's say i just want to go into requirements and then requirements um, okay yeah you go and here it is looks like i was saying something let's add as a pattern Ah, sorry guys. So here I am. Think all this lockdown is taking my mind away. Okay, here it is. Talking about nested requirements. So this is a predefined pattern which you can create using a model wizard um, of EA. Um, this is a model wizard. When I created this package, I selected this one here, which says new model from a pattern. So the package is created with a, with a diagram and with a set of uh, elements inside that particular package. And how the structure of the elements uh, will be is what you're seeing here. This, this is a nested requirement hierarchy. As you can see, there are requirements which are nested inside a uh, parent requirement. So I say, I click on like, you know, create, create patterns and then say, okay, fine and i uh, get a diagram here click on it there you go so 
requirement A is a parent diagram, how the relationship is defined is parent-child relationship again here, okay? Requirement A and there's requirement A.1 and inside which we have requirement A.1112131. I'm pointing to the project browser here and then there's requirement A.2 and A.3, etc. Okay, this is a parent-child relationship. This is a nested. It's not just a diagram pulled on, an element pulled on top of each other. It's it creates a relationship between these elements when we do that. You can do it like on the fly, like for example, say functional requirement, and then open it up, make it a little bit bigger, and then on another functional requirement, say okay, add functional requirement. So you can see, you know, the relationship actually is created. The parent-child relationship is actually created in the project browser. So that is nested hierarchy. I'll just save this. Um, we don't need this. Now we will see composite hierarchy relationships. Similarly, I'll select this package here, requirement relationship, and click on the model wizard again. And I want to see the uh, composite one. So what you see here, here the composite relationship is created. This is requirement B, C, D, and E aggregates to requirement A, okay? So that's the, this is again, child requirements, but it's not with drill down, no, let's say create. Um, okay, it's created, composite, double click on it. Yes, okay. So here you can see requirement A, which has this relationship between A and B aggregation. Uh, you can see requirement A and requirement B, they are related by aggregation and C, D and E, they're all aggregated to A. That means these are all part of requirement A. And then there's requirement B here. You can see the symbol and wondering what is inside. Let's see. Ah, uh, yeah, it is. Again, requirement B has been, um, you know, that ha it's B, B point, B, one, B2, B3, B4, these are all aggregated to requirement B. So these are split part into four different, you know, child or four components, I should say, of requirements. So in the project browser, if you see the hierarchy, you can see the hierarchy, how they are structured, okay? So requirement B, C, D, they are not children, but they are aggregated. That's how it is, the relationship here. So with the component, Composite hierarchical relationship done. Let's see. I just want a simple hierarchical relationship. How do I create it? Same way, just select the package, go to the model wizard. I need to have like a one level hierarchy just like this or a two level hierarchy. I don't want complexity. I don't want dr drilling down. Just want one simple diagram where I can say this is the you know uh, hierarchy of the relation uh, of the requirements. So I can just go, let's, I've just chosen two levels for the sake of, um, you know, the, yes. Interesting. Double click. Here you go. This is one simple diagram, which you'll be able to present to your stakeholders straight away in one simple picture. Back. So this is done. So whatever we have seen so far is modeling relationship between requirements or between elements, uh, a solution component and, uh, you know, and a requirement, etc. using the diagrams. Now, I don't want to use a diagram. I'm not a diagram person. I, I'm, I'm very used to Excel. I just want to create a matrix relationship matrix uh, in Excel kind of environment. How do I do it? Yes, that's also possible. We have a feature called the relationship matrix here. You need to go into design the in the main menu and then click on metrics which is in the impact group 
click on it and then the relationship matrix appears. So this opens up with a predefined set of you know, um, uh, selection, but you can select what is the source package. Okay, I want to select uh, functional requirements. I want to select some use cases or some solution components and I want to create, you know, uh, let's say I will, I'll just for the sake of it, I'm just going to you know, uh, solution components. Okay, these are the solution components and then the type is requirement and the use case should be like, you know, uh, sorry, the type of the target should be component. Okay, so now we get all the components that are used to uh, used for implementing the solution, which the example here is the EA example. I've just used a subset of EA example, the huge you know, EA example that you'll see that ships with EA. Um, uh, this is for the online bookstore. So these are the components that are used for implementing the solution, and these are the requirements. There are no relationships here. I need to, you know, have a for example, create a relationship. There's a shopping basket. There's a bookstore database, order order application. So shopping basket should have uh, a link between order application. I create a realization. You know, uh, or I should probably uh, make it. Let me have trace. Yes, trace. I probably make it trace relationship. Okay, trace. The realization one exists, so I can remove it if I need to. For now, I'm just leaving it. So once you create the relationship, yeah, you, what you can do is you can just save save it as a profile. Okay, save it as a new profile. Let's say a test profile. Okay, uh, let's see some of the pre-existing profiles which I've already created for us to view in the webinar. Uh, this is a matrix, a relationship matrix between requirement and use case for this particular, you know, uh, a manage inventory scenario. So manage inventory and then we have under manage inventory, the, uh, the requirements are receive books, list stock levels, order books, etc., add books, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, these are the relationships that are already existing. If there are no relationship existing, you can actually see and verify. That's why it's in the impact group. You can see an impact analysis. For example, if you want to change, if somebody submits a change request for a requirement, you can go into the relationship metrics and then see, okay, this is a requirement, and what are all the things that it affects? What all the components that it affects, what are all the you know user interfaces, the touch points of this particular requirements in our solution implementation, and then see how it affects the, the how the change affects and what's the cost. It helps you assess all these you know uh, things when you do uh, a business analysis on a change. So this is how relationship metrics is modeled and used. Let's go back to our parent diagram. So we have discussed on relationship metrics and add links to requirements. Okay, this is something I just uh, thought we can um, do uh, uh, on the diagram. For example, database software engineering, let's say a component model, uh, user interface, common components, web server components. Okay, uh, say, uh, um, let me say this. For example, okay, and it traces to a particular requirement inside the analysis and business modeling. As you can see, I'm just processing through the EA repository. You know, you can see how it's been structured. We have analysis and business modeling repository, and I'm going into the software engineering area, which is which is you know the developers will be using. Uh, you can have controls, establish controls on how people will use, whether you can give read permission or write permission or, the, you know, the package is locked, etc. All these things are possible and uh, enabling version control, etc. So I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to show you how I'm using it, like when have establishing relationship between you know different um components uh different uh, you know solution um components like i i don't mean components in terms of uml components it's generally you know parts of solutions that we develop in the process of implementation it could even be a ui wireframe 
there. So we have this here. We have the functional requirements, manage inventory. Okay, what are all the you know store and manage books? Um, let's say we just need uh, now if there's a search for book, I could have used that, but still I don't know. I thought it would be there. I just use this for the sake of uh, you know um, demonstration, and then say okay, I've used so the the thing the this simple feature is so useful. You don't have to go into the toolbox to see, you know, what relationship is applicable. EA by default, it has the intelligence to show, okay, I'm going to establish relationship between a component and a requirement. So these are the applicable, you know, relationship between these two components. So I will say trace. Okay. Uh, just to say, if I am going to change anything, any uh, uh, change request comes for this particular requirement, my relationship metrics or my impact diagram will show, okay, this one, uh, this component relies on this particular requirement can impact if you change anything, thereby you can assess how it impacts. Okay, that's the point of establishing this relationship. All righty, let's check this off. So this checklist is done. Let's move on to the next topic. All right, mm, traceability. Uh, so far, what we have done establishing relationship is all for the sake of traceability. So what is traceability? Traceability is where you create a lineage of, you know, uh, of the requirements through to the, uh, to, to the entire project lifecycle and wherever the requirement touches upon the project. Um, or the solution, like it could be a user interface, it could be just a document, it could be, you know, um, a, a report that's been automatically created in a BI dashboard, it could be the implementation, the architectural uh, uh, artifacts, like, you know, an application diagram in an application portfolio, or it can be, you know, a deployment diagram, can be an uh, activity diagram, data flow diagram, anything. You just establish the relationship when you define a requirement as you go by the business analysis um, process and you design and model these requirements and implement code, et cetera, even to the level of code. If I have a block of uh, code, which is uh, say a function, you can say, you can add this requirement ID as a comment in a particular code saying this, this function implements this requirement so that's how much how uh, detailed level of traceability can go so what i'm talking about is you know how i would like to see traceability to be used um it is um we can implement things in variety of ways even within ea there are millions of ways hundreds of ways to do a particular thing i'm showing you the way that i know and i've been using it so don't take it like this is the only way to do it this is how i use it so i'm just showing showcasing that so let's see the traceability view. So in EA, we have um, uh, this, okay, this is portal. So this is a very useful feature that's, that I've been using from EA 15, I believe. Scott, can you point out, was was this portal there in EA 14? Uh, might have been a little bit earlier than that, but oh, I know yeah. the portals have been, um, yes, yeah, so I think it was in 14, but, um, uh -huh. I know that they've been enhanced and, and modified uh, as time's gone by as well. So, uh, yes, yeah. absolutely. So, you know, the menus changes, the location changes, people forget where it is. So it's so easy. Uh, they he has made it so easy to find out what you need. So if you want to find a package or an element, go and search in the search bar here. Okay, search bar. That's one thing. If you want to, if you don't know where the command is, I just go and use this command. If, for example, the portals is the portals window was not open. I want to go and search traceability and just go and you know trace. Just do it. Okay. So for now, because it is here, I'll just go in here and show you. If you select trace, these are the different f tools available for you in EA to uh, see the traceability. Um, uh, aspect of an element let's click on traceability and see okay there it is because i've not selected any element in the project browser so far it's just not showing anything let's see okay i will select on manage inventory see as you can see as 
instantly it just shows the relationship between this requirements to other requirements to all levels of detail let's you know to so manage inventory owns store and manage books and then okay there's other relationship in which store and manage book owns these requirements and these are owned by composed of realized it realizes managed titles use case and it implements all these things associated with this particular actor it is needed by this particular component managed inventory with which is actually a solution component it's a part of you know this particular requirement so you can see all the relationships for this one particular element when you select straight away this is another way so you say we saw the relationship matrix that is one view and traceability views you know another way where you don't want to you know you're in the process of doing analysis and you don't want to get uh, you want this diagram uh, to be there you don't want to change the view into a relationship view but still for this particular element i want to know the touch points there um, in the in the repository just can select go into the traceability view and you can have the uh, entire relationship hierarchy of this particular uh, element this is one way then, then there's another thing called relations relationships view so here what you will see is just one level you know it's, it, it's not going to show okay manage inventory owns inventory reports but it will not be showing like what store and manage is going to own like auto books etc so i just click on this okay come on I'll just spin it so that's easier for us to see. Hope people can see this. Mm. Yes. So this manage inventory has all these relationships. See, um, this one order books, receive books. It's not just you're viewing it. If you want to go and you know double click on it, you will see what it is, what the relationship, what the roles are, etc. Okay this is how intuitive it is so if i want to okay i want to see like oh where is where where in all diagrams this particular stock levels is and from the traceability view very very in ea you just go right click you'll find the you know supporting features like you want i want to switch to the related element i want to just see view related element properties okay now i'm going to change this manage inventory i want to see what are the properties and requirements and you know tags added to it list level okay volatility is medium if it was low and i'm going to change something in the managed inventory it really doesn't matter because the volatility is minimum and there's a change request for this managed inventory there's something i have to go into a bit more of analysis so that kind of you know i'm just creating these things um for you to understand why and how the traceability is used views are used and the relationship view are used okay let's remove them now we have seen traceability view and relationship view Another one, inspector view. Can I find any inspector? Yeah, here it is. Here it is. If you don't find, as I said, you just go and inspector, and then you have to hit enter, and you'll get it because it's already there. It's just going to show up. Okay. I'm going to pin this. Here it is. I will select. Uh, we just select a different one just put it you know um okay now this let's say i want to use a struct use case diagram and then say manage users close account create account so what are the relationship what are the scenarios for this see I'll make it a bit more interesting with these cases so when i select this particular element here which is a use case element which um, a create account used to model a requirement to create account for this for the bookstore example okay so click on it this inspector is similar to the traceability view but it's kind of it just gives you it's not into level by level but it gives you all of the not just the relationships it gives you a lot of other information as well if there are any discussion points that were there it will show up here are there any attributes and operations are there linked features what is the requirement that's linked to it so here you can see interestingly there are the scenarios are defined for this use case 
um, if there are any attached documents, files, are there any test cases to this? Are there any, like, you know, what is the effort created for this project? Resource, for example, resource. In most organizations, this is often, you know, what happens is there are so many different teams. I'm talking about matrix level organizations. There are different teams. There's a delivery team, which is located in a geography, ge geographically different location to, you know, another team which analyzes um, the BA, BA people on the client side and developers on, you know, um, offshore, etc. So the visibility of who's handling what becomes a bit, you know, it's a bit of a struggle or challenge to uh, uh, say the delivery managers. Like I've I've been in such a situation saying like our main problem is I I know this uh, requirement has been approved and it's going to the implementation team and then the you know there's a, a manager there, project manager, uh, and the implementation manager who is going to you know allocate resources but then it's in their team it's not you know it's not visible to the actual service delivery manager because there are so many different teams and then you don't know which team it has gone to and who's actually working on it just in case you know when the operation side of something is happening and we want to touch on a particular requirement want to know who is the developer has done it who knows the knowledge about it I just want to um, ask him for a meeting to discuss on it it's it's just a you know if you it, it's just not there so it's not simple to find out these kind of things it takes a lot of time when you're, we are talking about you know in a real environment it takes you know a lot of phone calls and discussions etc but if we have features like this okay this is it this is the resource who's working on it that's it bam just make a call talk or email Whatever you want to do, you can do a You save a lot of time. This is what I mean, like adding more smarts to your elements, more you know attributes, more information. You thereby you reduce cost, you reduce time, make it more accurate, make it make the life easy basically for all for all your team members. You know that's basically a job of a business analyst. I feel like you know if you don't just define in requirements, say oh here you go, I've done this document, you can take it, but ensure that it's done to a level of excellence where things are easy to you know to your stakeholders that's what i believe ea is um EA is doing uh, is capable of okay that is the inspector view so we spoke about traceability relationship inspector view and we have already spoken about the relationship matrix and now i'm going to talk about a traceability diagram okay so we want to show a lineage of you know the requirements through to the solution components so you can create a diagram like this saying like you know you want to present it to a, your stakeholder create a diagram okay so this is the uh, requirement yeah this is the goal that this requirement uh, is trying to achieve and there's the this design is the requirement which traces to this particular goal there's add to shopping basket and view shopping basket are the two use cases and this uh this is the wireframe basically you know a screen a browse catalog and a view basket which is required it's this diagram might seem very simple and straightforward but believe me it's very effective when you're doing a presentation and for stakeholder engagement it's you, you, and also another thing is it's not just this you can um you know change the appearance of this particular uh, element saying like appearance i just want enable custom drawing just want just a box like this you know you're talking to not too technical of a stakeholder then you can just change the appearance without having to lose the details or without having to transfer it to a powerpoint etc you know if you're talking to you know a technical person you just do this full information view and you will get it so these are the different views this is a diagram traceability diagram uh let's say no i don't want to do any um this is another one i'll just show it um this is a simple one say okay you're having a user experience designing workshop as a business analyst what you want to do you want to know like this is the requirement guys this is what we're going to talk about and here is the use case here in case there are any you know there's these are the scenarios let's say okay this is how the user design is going to be maybe you know the ux guys give, will give you some input and then you have a show basket say okay these are the scenarios let's see the scenarios how it goes double click on the view basket um and then go to the scenarios so we have you know the two basic parts let's go into the structured editor 
and then view basket details. Okay, obviously there are no steps. If there are steps, we'll say, okay, how how the experience will be. So that's the whole point of workshop. Okay, I want to create that scenario. A user logs in and sees, uh, you know, beautiful graphics, a flash graph, you know, animation, etc. And then how you want to actually the user to experience the journey, you can just add the steps here. Thereby, it is easy for the developer to, you know, you, you almost have done half of their job, you know, could describe all these scenarios. And as we have seen in our first webinar, it's so easy to create an activity diagram and then a, a rule flow diagram and to the level of code just by clicking. So you almost done their job and it's so easy to get an accurate relation, accurate solution by doing this. I'm not going to go into detail about how we generate activity diagram because we have already discussed that in our first webinar in the EA for BA series. So that's this. Next, I will talk about um, impact diagram. Mm, okay, it's not in the checklist, but it's a part of traceability diagram. Uh, okay, just to make things quicker, I've just dragged and dropped a particular requirement randomly, manage requirement, and Okay, there's someone submitted a request for this particular requirement. How do I, uh, you know? So this is the actual requirement status uh, statement. The system must include a complete inventory management facility to store and track stock of books for the online bookstore. Okay, for example, someone has submitted a change request or the market dynamics has changed. You need to change this particular requirement you need to look at changing how this requirement is implemented. And I want to see, okay, what are all the touch points it's going to affect? If you have created the traceability between the elements, establish the relationship between the requirements and the, and the you know uh, analysis elements, the requirements definition models, and the solution components could be wireframe, could be you know uh, even the code like um how do we track it? Let's say right click on the element and then say the simple um, uh, insert related elements menu. There is such a powerful one. I just love this. Click on it. And in the insert related elements dialog comes. I want to find the relationships to all levels, say five. Okay, that's too much. I uh, really don't want to go into that level of detail for initial analysis. Let's say three. And then I say refresh. Okay, so now I get this one. And I don't want, um, you know, um, okay, I want all these components here. If you don't want any of these components, you can uncheck the box and then say abstraction, refresh. Okay. Hmm. And then let's say, I don't want the aggregation, Ref refresh. Okay. Okay. So I can see all the um, use cases and all um, or the inventory manager component because it's a simple diagram you will get to see what i mean i just say okay i select all of this and then layout diagram and complete and you can see okay so here is an ac impact analysis the system does the impact analysis for you all you need to do is think you don't have to waste time you know dragging and dropping writing or taking out what are all the elements that are affected everything is here you just look at it and then analyze and use thinking to see how actually it impacts and you can brainstorm on it it's as simple as this if for example you know just um let's say in real life what happens is um, i'll create another diagram let's just make it simple a requirement diagram and say um, let's just use just say uh, uh, I'm going to use the requirement. This is just it's a simple, very simple example, a bookstore, an online bookstore. And with a you know, let's let's consider this as a minimum viable product for the solution. That's the that's what we have defined in this example. So for this, if I insert related elements and then say all levels, and then I select all and say refresh select all and okay just say 
the scale of the impact it might it mean there will be if one requirement is changed so this is i'm talking about a simple online bookstore example it's taking a while so there are so many components there and the, the diagram has to be you know cleaned up and the layout has to be performed scott would you like to jump in and uh, uh you know um talk about you know how okay sorry scott i have to cut no, you off that's all right. <laughs> i think what's important to point out is that you're going many levels deep looking at you know yes, so. relationships and so what would take a business yeah. analyst you know manually weeks of work you've been able to automatically generate an impact diagram with a few clicks and while yeah. yes we the, our internet age has made us a bit impatient that it might take five or ten seconds for it to load what you've actually done is been able to create an impact diagram showing the impact of making change or requirements several levels deep with lots of lots of interactions and being able to generate that uh, in real time in you know 20 seconds so it's it's pretty amazing capability also just conscious of the time uh have we got much yeah. more uh, uh we are we are almost the end of uh okay. um, our showcase and the prioritization is a simple thing i'll just quickly go through it and these are just the special mentions which i've done um prioritization again is um you know is kanban um diagram i'll just quickly go through it how we do prioritization this is a backlog prioritization diagram you can create it um it's a two level diagram and then you create it create the diagram and as you can see there are some already existing bugs and requirements and etc features etc you say the priority here is critical say for example you don't have an agile board a physical board you just want to manage uh remotely how how do you do it like i want to change the priority of this to you know to high as you can see now the priority is low for this element and you do that just changes to high this is one way of doing it like you know just easily manage the priorities while you have an online uh, stand-up meeting it's very relevant to the current times so i'll quickly move on to the other topic so that's an example kanban with priorities which we have uh, seen okay i did see the kanban diagram from model pattern okay over here i just need to have a um, model pattern and then say okay wait can then i need to have diagrams right okay uh, okay yeah uh, Mm -hmm. Construction can be. There you go. And then say backlog and create pattern, create diagram. I'm just going to create the diagram for you. Did we get it? Okay. And then model patterns. Okay, create. Yeah. So this is how you create the diagram. Moving on to um, so if you have more questions, just feel free to uh, throw in the questions. We'll address it later on. And I'll uh, do a special mention about collaboration, which I'm sure Scott will have a special webinar addressing just the collaboration aspects, how we can do reviews, discussions, etc. 
um, then special mention for integration with other tools if people are peers are wondering like okay i have this great tool but i our organization have already um have a requirements repository in say jira etc we do have um in uh, capability enterprise architects have the capability to integrate with um say G, uh, jira service um service now etc with the use of ProCloud server, so where BA is to collaborate with an EA and ProLaborate is the more advanced uh, platform where you can have a dashboard kind of, you know, in uh, presenting insights of architectural insights, and then you can integrate with the other tools as well. It's a quick mention of the other features, which will be covered in special webinars by itself. And importing requirements. Yes, we can import requirements from MS Word and MS Excel. Um, yeah, um, Scott, am I? Uh, is it okay for me to go ahead, or do you want me to leave it for the next webinar? Like, what do you prefer? Oh, we might leave that for the the next webinar. But there was some Excel? questions about, you know, uh, mm -hmm. is it possible to import from Visio? So um, I just brought up a a page on the website which yes. uh, shows some instructions about importing from uh, Visio. So I think yes. it is important for people to understand that we support XMI import, that you can import requirements yes. from Word, you can import requirements from Excel, you can import, you can import uh, elements from Visio if you want to get that into Enterprise Architect. And once it's in Enterprise Architect, you can then link those requirements to a broader enterprise um, structure and uh, yeah and um, have a much greater traceability, which gives you lots of advantages that you've talked about today. Yes. So just I might- so quickly, um, uh, yes? sorry, 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 just quickly, I'll see, I'll just see, uh, show you, uh, EA with your importer is an add-in, you just need to install it, and then you will find the uh, Microsoft Visio add-in, you know, if you want to import Visio documents, this add-in helps, just say import Visio document and click on the link. Now that, because I've not installed Visio in my machine, you'll see it, otherwise this is the one that you'll be using it. And similarly with the office, you can import Word document, Excel document, etc. using this uh, from SharePoint or a local, you know, local file system etc so uh this one unfortunately i was not able to cover in detail but i've just showed you how it is uh the feature how it's all in here you can easily do it you can drag and drop you can import and a document etc let's look at it in a separate webinar and thank you guys it's been a very interesting session and just you know quickly that i, I don't realize that i'm have passed that quickly uh over to you scott <laughs> No worries. Thank you very much. I think uh, Enterprise Architect is very comprehensive when it comes to requirements, so it is pretty easy to get carried away. And uh, in a very short amount of time, we've shown how you can create requirement structure. I sent out a item in the chat with a link to show you how to, um, you know, do some of the colour coding for requirements that uh, Nithya demonstrated, how to build some of the relationships and. Um, so we, yeah, we'll probably send a uh, email message out to everyone that's registered for the webinar uh, with a few links to some of these in the help file so that you can find out more information. So there's a couple of quick questions. Uh, there's a question from Michael saying, uh, uh, is the model available and will it be available on your website? So uh, Nithya, will yeah. we be able to make this uh, model available on, uh, the sparksystems.com slash webinars page. definitely definitely scott i'll send you soon after this webinar we'll address the questions that are not touched upon now and then the uh, model i will send it to you and yeah you can upload it you're the expert at it so i'll just send yep. all the details <laughs> to you yeah <laughs> yes and we'll upload it so so that's great um there's a couple of questions from uh, Lewis uh, and a few other people talking about um, how can you, you know, define, you know, who approves a requirement, who wrote a requirement, and is there any way of um, managing some of that um, around, you know, who's responsible for a requirement, who wrote it, and um, approving a requirement? Absolutely. That's exactly what I meant by having, you know, the attributes by default, a requirement will have, um, you know, the properties where we have, we can have an author. Mm. 
I'll just not sure. Okay. Uh, prop, so see here, there's an author. Uh, you can have uh, various other, uh, you know, attributes added to it, like who's going to review it, etc. As I said, Scott is going to give you a webinar about review and discussions and a separate webinar, which is uh, by itself deserves a uh, whole whole art to discuss. Is it not, Scott? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And there's lots of collaboration features in Enterprise Architect 15.2. And I think the one important thing about that question and to point out here is that Enterprise Architect makes it very easy to track who the author is and you can mm. create your own custom tagged values to you know, specify things like approval and is approved and you know, um, setting dates and timelines and things like that as well. So what I might do is I might just share my screen and I'll wrap up uh, ever so briefly. Okay. Yep. Uh, so um, there are a number of people uh, that ask, is this going to be made available? So there's a Spark Systems YouTube. So if you just go into Google and type Spark Systems YouTube, we have a very comprehensive list of videos, including a number of videos on the um, MATLAB and Simulink uh, integration that's part of Enterprise Architect 15.2 plus many of the previous webinars and if you go to sparksystems.com slash webinars you can see our entire library. Uh, it usually takes us you know 48 to 72 hours to get uh, things up on sparksystems.com and that's often because we need to spend a bit of time um, answering some of the questions and it's been such a popular session that might take a little while uh, but we'll try and make it available um, in the next 24 hours on YouTube the video. Uh, as I mentioned at the start Enterprise Architect 15.2 is officially released this week so uh, feel free to download Enterprise Architect 15.2 today and you can try some of these things out for yourself and uh, we will send an email with a few links to the help file uh, if you have any questions or suggestions for future webinars, please just email webinar at sparksystems.com and uh, we look forward to seeing you at uh, future sessions. Uh, thanks, Nithya, for a very um, detailed uh, overview of requirements management uh, within Enterprise Architect. Uh, it's been My great pleasure, to your Scott. And um, we might wrap up. Uh, sorry we ran a little bit over time. Uh, take care, look after one another and uh, look forward to seeing you again in future for future webinars on Enterprise Architect. Uh, have a great day, look after one another and uh, thanks so much Nithya. Thank you, my pleasure.